it has started with. So you are able to see the screen, right? Yes, sir. So, anyway. so last class, uh, if you remember, you know, we have started our uh, impact cratering. Okay. So like this is the fundamental thing uh, in our uh, planetary geology, in all planetary formations, sir. So the idea is everything forms by impact only. Okay. So now uh, any planet you go, say even Mars or anything you see, you will see a lot of craters. So the lot of interest has been come on these impact craters, and then uh, you know the thing is uh, you see and these are uh, impact craters. They are also used in geological things, okay, to find out the relative age of that area, so that you know to decide on the landing sites. Say. So where you where you want to land, you know. so these things becomes very helpful. Whether it is a young area, geological, what you are going to find out, you know, when you go for a moon mission. So these plays a very important uh, role itself. Okay, so this we started. And then in Earth also, a lot of uh, people have done a lot of studies, you know. So as already I told you, in our uh, geology or stratigraphy, so terrestrial analogs I told you, okay. So you should have an analog, basically. So on Earth, but the negative thing is, you know, the things get eroded or whatever. But still people have done like, you know, going that place, collecting the rocks and then trying to identify uh, what type of impact things, what you can see in those uh, places itself, okay. So this also I told you. Then the most important thing I told you in our Earth say is the uh, average uh, impact velocities. Okay, if there is an asteroid, uh, how much we told? Any of you remember? So if you see these graphs, what is the impact velocity for an asteroid on Earth? Hmm. You can see here the impact uh, velocity so is almost. Uh, you, know, uh, you can see here the downwards is kilometers per second. The top is miles per second. Okay, so if you go down, uh, almost it is uh, 16 to 17 uh, kilometer per second. Okay, now this is for asteroids, but if it is a comets and other things, so then the impact uh, velocity is extremely high, basically. And of course, so this impact velocity depends on the gravity of the planets, and then uh, you know these things have been estimated. Okay, like how much will be the velocities if they happen on uh, this one, if they happen on you know, other uh, planets itself. Just one second. Hello. Hello. So anyway, so now, uh, so these things, you know, they depend on the you know, other planets. The velocities will be extremely different. Okay. So this is one thing also I told you. Uh, you know, uh, now what we said was. So what we said was, but on Earth everything gets eroded or whatever, and then the most important thing is how do we identify the craters? Yeah. So last class I told you, right? If you have, if you have gone to a particular site, so whether it is a crater or not, okay. So one thing is, anyway, you will see from the Google Maps or you know the topography information, you can identify approximately circle or you know something like that. But in the field, what is that you have to do? Yeah. What is the most important thing I told you in the last class? Yeah. Type of rock that is found there. Hmm. The type of the rocks. Uh, why? What happens? See, when there is impacts are 11 kilometer, 17 kilometer per second, so hypersonic, you know, because the pressures will be extremely high, then the temperature will be extremely high. The surface rocks they get modified basically. Okay, that's what we are calling a shock metamorphism. That is the whole rock. It changes its uh, entire, you know, the mineral structure or whatever because of this high pressure as well as high temperature itself. Okay. So that's what we told shatter cones, uh, you know, these type of things we have said in the last class. And then, uh, you know, like what with the pressure, say, what you can expect this much pressure, this much temperature, what type of rocks will get formed. So these things have been nicely geologically, people have done uh, you know, all the things and they have identified also. So these type of things you can see PDF, planar deformation features, you know, you can see these type of uh, rocks itself, okay. And the most important why uh, the thing which you when that impact site say, of course, other things are there, but shatter cones, you know, these are the very variety, interesting type of rocks you will find in uh, near uh, impact craters. Okay, so this is what the shatter cones, how they look like in uh, field. Okay, so in, in Google, uh, you can type, you know, you will get excellent uh, images of all these type of uh, rocks itself. Like this is one type of rock, you know, suite basically. Okay, so this is a typical rock. Uh, which is found in rice impact crater in Germany, even in other places also. So you will find these type of rocks. You can see here, 
it's a huge rock that a dark color you can see right these are all the melted uh, fragments because during impact temperatures are high say so you this thing this type of things will get uh, form this is uh, this also you know, it is impact melt pressure okay so near the center of the crater say once the crater has uh, been formed then things goes down and you, know, you can see these type of nice uh, features actually and now can you identify what is this rock this side Now, what is this? Now, what do we call this one? Previous slide also I have shown you, right? What do you call this one? Shatter cones. Shatter cones. So, yeah, so that's it's very simple. So if you are observing these type of features, you say, definitely it is a impact crater. But you have to be careful. One thing is sometimes volcanic craters, you say, when volcano comes out also, you will see some of some similar things will be there. But the shatter cones, these things, you know, they you can see especially in the impact craters. Okay. Uh, this also like you see you will see granitic uh, this one's a quarry this type of you know brushia this exposure uh, you know small small thing you can see and this is also one more uh, you know the planar deformation features they found out at dhalo okay that crater i told you right near in uttar pradesh near the jansi gwalior region so these things have been uh, observed okay so this type of uh, you know balance texture you will see variety variety of these things you know at those uh, places so these things are widely used, you know, by geologists, you see, to understand whether it, the crater has been formed by impact or volcanic thing or by some uh, geological uh, process itself, okay? And now these are types of craters, say. basically we told simple, complex, multi-ring, you know, aberrant crater, so many things are there, but these are the, just the broad classifications. In some textbooks, you know, they will classify craters as only simple and complex only. So multi-ring and other things comes under uh, complex crater only, okay? Like that also, you know, they're right. So this also we discussed in the last class, floor, central peak, wall, ring, ejecta, race, everything we have discussed in the last class. And this is how a simple crater looks like and a complex crater set. It looks like, uh, you know, the sections I showed you in the last class also, okay? So simple craters anyway, we have already shown you, like what will be the approximate, uh, you know, the diameter, and what will be the approximate chlor to depth is like one by five. This is a thumb rule, you know, like the, the diameter is D say. So D by five will be the approximate uh, rim to chlor depth, okay? So these numbers have come from field investigations and from even observations on moon and other planets and even from numerical simulations, he said. So this is how the number approximately, you know, it looks something like this, okay? At the center, you will see a lens of broken rock, okay? That's what we are calling as a brushia, you know, because of impact and other things that you know, happens here. And the thickness of this brushia is approximately half to one by three. So these are some typical numbers, okay? So this is how a complex crater gets uh, formed here. This also I showed you. This is how, you know, the processes of, uh, you know, the craters, how they look like, okay? So this is what the thing, the crater diameter versus crater depth is here. So if you do geological studies as well as numerical simulations, that one by five, the approximately 0.23 somewhere around this number uh, comes out, okay? And now coming to the complex craters, I said. So now generally, you know, the simple craters, you know, they form when the sizes of craters are very small. So you will see simple craters, okay? Now when the crater sizes are very large and the impactors are also very large, so you will see these type of uh, complex, uh, you know, the craters itself. So in moon, say basically, a large 20 kilometer above craters. So if you see any crater which is less than 20, it will be very simple crater. But if it is more than 20, say, all of them, you know, they look very complicated. But if you see an earth say, if you see craters which are less than three kilometer diameter, they will be simple. But more than three, you will see all kinds of uh, complexity, which says, you know, the gravity and other uh, things also plays a major role in uh, the simple to complex crater uh, transition itself, okay? So why they, these craters are, you know, so initially everything will be a bowl shaped like a hemisphere only. But then, you know, uh, after, uh, you know, the things gets rebounded or, uh, you know, the brushier or whatever. So you will see all these type of complicated, uh, that's why we call them as a uh, complex craters, okay? Now the transitions uh, between simple and complex, uh, how much, like, you know, what diameter, you know, will be simple, what diameter more than is simple, like an earth three kilometer is a transition kind of thing. On moon, it may be 20 or something like that. And Mercury, Earth, and if you see IC satellite set, so there is a transition basically, okay? So of course, I see things anyway, the strength is low. So there also we have some uh, issues basically. Okay? And then the floors of the complex crater set, it is covered by melted and highly shocked debris basically. Okay? And melt pools are there, sometimes seen in the depressions in the surrounding ejecta blanket also. Okay, The surfaces of the terrace blocks, you say. 
They tilt towards center, crater walls and melt pools are also common in these depressions. Uh, you know, you can see, you, you will see in this uh, craters itself, okay. So, these type of things itself we showed you, okay. So, initially everything will be hemisphere like this type of a bowl. But finally, you know, because of complications, you will see these type of complex uh, phenomena, okay. And now, uh, so this is how the on moon, uh, you know, we are showing here. So, this is a pit we call 10 micrometer on very, very small scale. Okay. Now, simple crater means, you know, uh, one kilometer. So, if you see craters on moon, they will be very simple. All of you would have downloaded the topography data of moon. There also you can uh, verify these uh, details. Okay. Now, Euler crater is there, sir. 28 kilometers is a diameter. Okay. So, you can see it is a complex uh, kind of thing it comes. So, whereas, Moltec, one kilometer, you will see very simple uh, thing itself. And once the crater diameter increases, uh, 320 kilometers, Schrodinger basin, you know, uh, in the moon. So, you will see, apart from complex also, these type of peak rings also will come into pictures. And Oriental basin is there, sir. Its diameter is 970 kilometers. You will see multiple uh, rings itself. So, what it says is when the crater diameters are increasing, say, so everything, uh, you know, uh, what should be a simple crater, complex crater, peak ring basin, multi ring basin, say. So, you, you can nicely classify them based on their uh, diameters because, you know, the diameter is more, say, the impact also, size also would be different. Its velocity may be, you know, uh, slightly different also. So, this is a classification which you can clearly observe in uh, Moon. Okay. So, if you download all the data and then you check like diameters less than this much, you will see simple phenomena. Then, you know, complexity is increased as diameters, uh, you know, increase itself. So, this is one crater in moon only, okay, current is crater, diameter is 8.5 kilometers. So now, what type of crater it is? Hmm. Now, what type of crater it is here? Current is crater, 8.5 kilometers. Hmm. Simple crater. You can see, you don't see any, uh, it's a simple crater. So, at the center, there is some small thing. These are brushia lens or whatever here. Now, when you see Tycho crater, so which is 85 uh, kilometer is a diameter. Now, uh, you can see here, uh, of course, there is some, uh, this one is there, but what type of crater it is, you can see clearly the rim here. Simple crater means you know, nicely, you can see the rim, everything. But if it is a complex crater, so you will not see the rim, you will see the rim has broken, you know, the rings have come, you know, at the center points, so you have seen uplift here also. So, this is what it happens as a crater diameter increases, okay. So, this is one very interesting uh, graph, okay, which a geologist have constructed, like, you know, the transition diameter. Transition means from simple to complex crater, okay, versus planetary gravity. So, they say that planetary gravity plays a major role in this uh, transition. So, if you see Earth basically, okay, and if you put all the crater dimensions everywhere here, and then you find the transition. So, for Earth, what is the transition diameter? Uh, so, can you see here? It is log log uh, 2, then 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, like that, this graph. So, for Earth, say, uh, what is, so what is the crater diameter? What is the transition diameter from simple to complex? No, approximately. If you see here, how much is the value? Three kilometers. Three kilometers. Okay. So less than three means it is simple. More than three means it is a complex or some. Uh, of course, you have a standard deviation. You know, uh, it is also there. But this is around the mean uh, kind of thing itself. Now, when you go to moon, say. So now for moon, what is the transition? Like you know. Uh, so this is a ten here. Now what's the transition here? What's the value here? 20 kilometers. Approximately 20 kilometers. So now uh, moon's gravity is, uh, you know, right, very low compared to our Earth. So in moon, uh, if the crater is a 10 kilometer or, you know, 15 kilometer also, sir, you will see simple crater only. You will not see any complications. More than uh, 20 means uh, you will see all kinds of complicated things itself. Now Mars is somewhere here, okay, some 6 kilometer is a transition uh, diameter. Then Mercury say, is almost, you see, 10 kilometer is a uh, diameter. So, this is a very, very important graph which shows, you know, the transition from simple to complex. It depends on the planet's gravity and it varies basically from planet to planet. And this is only for the terrestrial planets only. Suppose if it is icy satellites or, you know, some ice kind of things, then this may be entirely different and we don't have much data, you know, in those icy type of uh, structures itself. 
so now this is what the uh, complex crater okay already i showed the photograph same thing in a slightly different fashion so you will have you know already the impactor has hit so the excavation stage so that means where you know the crater is getting uh, formed itself so you will see like you see the shock waves and other things comes up so once the shock waves goes down say the compression and because uh, as already i told you right when you see that there are different different layers are there say so when a wave goes uh, you know in one direction it hits basically these layers or these uh, materials so what happens is some portion gets reflected back some gets uh, transmitted okay you would have seen that snell's law and other things also so a compressive wave say when it reflects back it turns out to be as a, a tensile uh, you know the wave itself so that's what the rare fraction is something here so you can see at the center portion and other places say so this tension starts coming so the lower portion you know it uh, comes up to the you know it just upliftment happens basically and then this is what we are calling as uh, this red one you are seeing right eject uh, curtain basically so all the materials whichever is at the center of the crater it just flies off you know and it melts or whatever you know it melts off so this is what the end excavation and the modification say you will see this type of uh, you know the things itself and finally say the crater uh, you know you will see a center uplift and then these walls also the crater walls whatever you are seeing here because they will be highly unstable you know after some point of a time because of gravity or whatever say they also collapse actually like you can see this type of a collapse you can see here so this and then you know the normal faults basically so these are all what we call as a fault so when you see a complex crater or near the walls say you will see faults basically faults means they have been caused basically due to the crater uh, collapse so you will see these type of faults and then you know the melted fragments and other things you know you will uh, brush here the uh, fall or right all these things comes into picture here and not only that one the entire uh, stratigraphy say gets changed in uh, complex crater if you see the original stratigraphy say see the dark brown say the chocolate color is in the black basically this is the oldest one but after the crater has uh, formed say if you see stratigraphy the top bottom most of the oldest rocks it has come to the uh, surface itself so the stratigraphy also entirely you know changes in the complex crater okay so this is what the you know this just a comparison simple crater and this is a complex crater both of them are uh, slightly the diameters are different so you can see the finally say simple crater on the left right side say this is the starting there's a transient crater and then gravity collapse happens and then this is how it happens so you will see this type of no central structure the brescia lens or whatever in the slumped material it comes up now when it is a complex crater so the center point you will see an uplift actual okay so which i showed you in this here also so and finally say so you will see the central uplift here and then you know you will see these type of melt sheets and then brescia you know all those uh, things comes into picture itself okay and now people have done some studies like on moon also you measure all the craters you say you find out the depth of the crater in that qga software you know the height of the crater the diameter of the crater and they have fitted some simple uh, equations like empirical like you see the amount of structural uplift say they say it is given by this expression hs is 0.06 d to the power of 1.1 so from the data you know these numbers have been estimated and then on moon say the depth of complex craters increases from about 3 to 6 kilometers only while crater diameters range from 20 to 400 so although the crater diameter is uh, increasing the crater diameter if it is a 400 kilometer also depth is only 6 kilometers so you can see here also so when the craters say simple crater is fine but when you are having the complex crater the depth of the craters is very very small you know in the complex craters okay so depth increases by only 3 to 6 kilometers three times basically or two times it increases but crater diameters are 20 to 400 so if you have a crater whose diameter is very large 400 kilometer but depth increase is extremely small so this one typical uh, very important feature about the complex craters and then this rim height say, also increases rather slowly with increasing diameter because much of the original rim say, slides into the crater bowl as the wall collapses so this is what we said here okay so this rim basically it is like this is red color you are showing here the crater rim is increased here but slowly it collapses of gravity and then these normal faults comes into you know because you can see here everything has been collapsed here so the rim also you know automatically the height also uh, rather slowly you know this happens and then complex craters say they are larger than the transient crater from which they form basically and estimates say the crater diameter may increase as much as 60 percent during the collapse so that means you know so you can see Initially, the crater was only this much portion. So, this is the end excavation stage, this much stage. 
but once everything has been formed the crater diameter you know it increases basically okay so this also you know is one very important thing about the complex craters and then they say that from here to here say 60% uh, increase will be there from this place to this place 60% increase in the diameter you can see because of collapses and other uh, gravity related things itself and then this is also one more scaling relation this also has been estimated from the observations from remote sensing they have estimated the data and then they fitted some type of equations say so it says the rim to rim diameters of a complex crater is related to the transient crater diameter okay so dt is a transient crater diameter and dsc it is basically the diameter at simple to complex transition so these are simple to complex transition and these are dt is a transient crater that is this original crater you follow so this is a original transient crater which has been formed so this is a transient crater so if i know this one i can find out uh, d uh, from the dtc i can find out from d but i also require this uh, ds to c also and as already i told you uh, simple to complex transition say okay so now this uh, depends on what now see what does the diameter from simple to complex transition say uh, it depends on what gravity of the planet uh, gravity of the planet so on earth it is different moon it is different mars it is different that is different actually okay so this you can use to calculate this approximately these numbers okay so you can verify so if you take any basin on moon say like i showed right tycho crater or whatever so you can check whether uh, these numbers these equations are good or not you know you can just verify your uh, details also okay so this anyway let's get cross section once again i am showing you here so complex crater diameter will be large da okay compared to the in your original thing and then you will see a central uplift and you will see and the crater rim say it comes down and then you will see these type of you know the faults basically all of them are uh, normal type of uh, faults itself near the crater uh, walls itself and this also shows you this figure also shows you say uh, like you know where you will see these type of i think you know planar deformation features diaplectic glasses because the shock metamorphism the rocks entirely they change their uh, structure itself where you will see diamonds you know all those things uh, you know these figures will uh, tell you that well, okay so these are very important uh, cross section about our uh, you know this one and you can see this a uh, dotted line say this is a transient crater you follow so this crater was formed when the impact happened this was a transient crater okay due to the impact so once impactor melts and goes away because you know the shock or air fraction the central uplifts and then finally da is the uh, diameter of your uh, complex crater transient crater diameter is very small and then uh, the ratio is almost 60% increase okay so if you know the transient crater diameter say you can find out a da from this uh, expression but you should know dt that is a dt is a transient crater diameter and dsc if you know for moon you can easily find out our uh, d that is after the Uh, trans this one's a d that's apparent a diameter of your uh, complex crater also so these are all empirical uh, simple rules uh, you know which people use it in uh, practice now uh, this is a complex crater say as already i told you you have a simple crater then complex crater and of course as a diameter increases basically you will see this is a complex of course multi, uh, this is a com this is also complex crater only you will see this type of multi ring uh, you know formations not one ring you know several rings you will see in this uh, complex things also so now on moon say the most famous uh, structure and uh, of course we have seen these things in other places also but the oriental basin say which is a diameter is almost 930 km diameter oriental basin it has a four nearly you know people have studied papers also have been published complete rings actually of inward facing stars okay then i this also i showed you last class you know valhalla basin basically okay so this is also a huge thing on uh, jupiter you know where you have seen several this type of ring structures okay so this is how you know the ring structures uh, you know forms basically so when the diameter is out to be very large so what happens is you know so this is a original the transient uh, crater here on the left side on the right side so after all these things uh, you know now you can see here you now what has happened the peak ring anyway melt pool and all other things are there the most important feature between left figure and the right figure say now what is the most important thing you will see no. uh, you have seen simplon and then complex also you have seen like you know these graphs i showed you uh, this is a simple crater okay uh, then this is a complex crater here it is a transient here it is the uh, final crater basically half of you know we are showing here so this is simple this is a complex crater okay now when you see the basin say and uh, now what has happened from this side to this side what is another important feature you can identify hmm. Hmm. 
Now, one more very important thing is there. What is that? Uh, you see the bottom, you know, what has happened near the bottom? Mantle uplift. No, mantle uplift, basically. So, because 930 kilometer is a diameter, say, that means the impactor size would have been huge, actually. So, when such things, uh, you know, like a 10, 10 kilometer or 20 kilometer is the, you know, the asteroid size, say, when it hits, say, what happens, say, you know? Automatically, that it breaks the crust of our Earth or our planet, and then it goes into the mantle, where you know you will see these type of lava and other things also. So because of that, you know, the mantle also gets uplifted actually. So these things you will observe in multi-ring basins. Okay, so this complex crater you will see at the center point uplift and others. In multi-ring basin also you will see uh, you know all those the same features as a complex crater. But you also will see the mantle uplift will come and then sometimes the lava, you follow it, it comes onto the surface also. So this is how a complex multi-ring, uh, you know, the crater looks like. So you will have a peak ring here, then the, the melt pools will be there, then, you know, the slump you know, basin wall comes and then the mantle also would have been uplifted. And there may be, uh, you know, this mantle may come up basically and then, you know, some mere basalt set. There's a sea. Last time also I told mare, imbrium, and other things also. The lava also comes up, and these will fill this, uh, you know, the basins itself. So this is what you will see in multi-ring uh, basins, but uh, they should be extremely large. Okay. So this is a mare oriental basin. You can see in this uh, figure. Okay. So the mare oriental basins, the inner scarp, you know, four rings. Uh, you know, you can identify here. And now what has happened at the center? Now why this thing has formed the black color? Say mare oriental. They are saying. Last class also I told you, mare means it is basically a sea of lava, you know, they call this as a mare. Now, why lava, these things came up at the center? Now, this is basically due to, yeah, the reason I told you, right, in the previous slide, why this lava comes up or what is the reason at the center? You don't see anything like a peak or something like that. So, that, that is, that has come basically due to? Mantle uplift. Yeah, due to mantle uplift, okay. So this is the reason why you see this also happened, the multi-ring basins itself. So this is what the, you know, the oriental basin, they say at five and six say. So because mantle uplift has happened, so you will see this type of, you know, capillary, you know, these actions are, you know, the things comes up and then it fills at the center point also, okay. So this is that Valhalla basin on, uh, you know, that's on Jupiter. A moon or something like that, but this has to be studied, you know, in detail. Nobody has uh, studied it basically, like you know, numerically simulating. Uh, you know, this has not the oriental basin people have done some numerical simulations and they have done a lot of uh, geological studies also. Okay, so now, anyway, this aberrant crater I also showed you in the last class. Okay, so aberrant crater means you know, uh, it is something like asymmetric kind of thing. So you can see here all the ejector races so they will be on one side so this happens when the angle of impact uh, you know asymmetry kind of thing it happens okay is not 90 degrees you know it may be some 30 degrees or uh, something else you will see these type of uh, variety of craters also or maybe you know when you are looking at the craters all the ejectors basically they are you will see only this side this side you will see nothing actually okay so these things may be, you know, impacting body or the planet or you follow, right? They don't follow the size morphology, but maybe due to some other reasons, you know, but these things also you will observe on moon and other planets also, okay? Now, this is what I told, impact basins, you say. Of course, these are also comes under complex craters only. So these are also very large uh, structures in moon, you can see here, okay? So the largest impact basin say on moon is a 2500 kilometers basically in diameter and more than one kilometers uh, deep itself so these are the basins you can see here mare imbrium mare serenitas say so these are the places where huge uh, these are also impact basins only but extremely large 2500 i think this is the south pole maybe this 2500 so mare imbrium these are also all the uh, basins itself you can see in uh, you know this one so like you see you would have seen with your naked eye also. So this is a basin, so mare imbrium basin. Then this is a mare serum. These are also basins which has been formed due to impact only. But why this has been, uh, why we are calling them as a mare? Yeah. So this is a mare means a sea of lava basically. So what has happened here yeah. during the impact? Say so what happened here in this region? So, yeah. See, why do you see the lava flows in these places? 
Uh, see, this is the imbrium basin, okay? That is this portion. So, mere imbrium is there, no? So, this portion we are showing here. So, you can see, so this imbrium basin, this is also a huge uh, basin, basically, okay? Very large uh, diameter. Here also, you will see the ring kind of structures itself. And Apollo 15, you know, the landing site was uh, located in this imbrium basin, okay? So, Archimedes crater is there. So, these are, you know, you can see Apennine uh, mountains, you know, these are all the ring kind of uh, structures itself in the basin. And this whole basin is filled with uh, you know, this lava. So why this lava comes here? Yeah. So what type of crater it is? Yeah, we have said, right, what type of crater this is, you know, simple or a complex or ring basin or what, what did we say? See why this is filled, you know, all of you are there. Now, this is because of, no. Now, we, I just told you, right, why, what happens? Like in the Oriental Basin also say, uh, what happens, you know, because of? Uplift of mantle. Uh, uplift of mantle and it has penetrated basically the crust itself. So, you know, that has been flown here. Okay. So, these are all the interesting basins on the moon actually. Okay. So, now anyway, this is a crater diameter. We will see after some time, like how we use this information to date this uh, craters itself. Okay. So, this is the relative age of the crater versus crater diameter. So, this has been done on the uh, moon itself. So, you know, you can identify after some point of a time, we will come back to this uh, feature itself, okay. Now, coming to the cratering mechanics, you say how the craters are, what is the basic mechanics of these craters, you know, of course, we will not go into the details, you know, because these are shock waves and other things, you know, we can have a full course on uh, impact mechanics itself, okay. We will not go into the details, just our, as already I told you, our objective is, you know, you should be able to identify landing sites, okay. So landing sites means you know, impact craters are common. So how do we do that is only our uh, objective itself. But you should know little bit about uh, mechanics or at least what is the methodology they use to find out this, uh, you know, the, how the crater formations and you know, that much is sufficient, okay. So the, of course, impact cratering is a very complicated process, you know. It is not like you cannot split into three pieces or something like that. But anyway, for our understanding generally is impact crater, they divide it into three processes, okay. One is a contact and compression, okay. Second is excavation phase. That is a crater is getting formed, the transient crater. Then we have the third one is a modification phase. So three things are there, okay? Contact and compression is essentially, this is the portion. So once the meteorite or asteroid or whatever, once it has a contact with the, you know, the uh, target set, the crust or whatever, the planet. So that's what we call as a contact and compression. So due to the contacts, so because it's a very hypersonic uh, thing itself, so, and the pressures are also very high, 17 kilometer per second is impact velocity, shock waves, they start uh, forming basically, okay. So, once the shock waves have been formed in the material, so then automatically the excavation happens, okay. The transient crater gets formed, that is what we are calling as a second stage, okay. And then the ejecta goes away, this all comes under here, then finally say, so this is what we call as you know, the modification phase basically. So there are several stages are there, but anyway, you know, the things are, you know, we divide it into three things for our uh, understanding. Now the contact and compression set, like, you know, how much uh, shock basically, like, you know, uh, if the impact size is, you know, some one kilometer is the size of the projectile and then its velocity 17 kilometer per second set, how much will be the shock wave or how much will be the velocities, how much energy gets transmitted into the, you know, that uh, the, our earth crust or the planet's uh, crust itself. So that you have to use this uh, shock wave equation. So whatever continuum mechanics, uh, you know, we have studied uh, like strength of materials or, you know, advanced structural mechanics. So those equations are not valid basically when you try to do this uh, shock mechanics, you know, because uh, uh, here uh, temperature is also very high, 10,000 degrees, you know, it may not be a solid, you see the material can go into fluid kind of a thing, then the viscoelasticity, you know, the plasticity, you follow all kinds of and pressures are so high, you know, temperatures are so high, there is ductile, you know, material are there, nothing we followed, right? So these things, it's a very complicated phenomenon. It's a very, and your mechanics, whatever we have studied, so there you cannot apply for cratering, you know, the mechanics because the velocities are so high. 
suppose if the velocities are so low say like 100 meter per second or maybe you know 10 meter per second or something maybe we could have used our uh, continuum again but since these are hypersonic say so you know we cannot use those one so what one does is they use this type of Fugnoit equations okay these are very famous things for shock uh, equations so what it says is you know if the shock wave is going from one medium to another medium so like region one to region one okay so these are the parameters so the velocity then density and then uh, you know the temperature or whatever if you give so it shows like this okay so that relates from one region to another region so rho into you know so u minus up is rho naught into u so you quantities behind the shock basically quantities behind the shock we are calling as zero uh, you follow this one and other one say we are calling this as here okay so region two is uh, region one is a zero region two is where your uh, shock is propagating so these are the three equations p is a pressure then rho is the density and up is the particle velocity behind the shock okay then shock material is assumed to be at rest then u is a shock velocity and e is energy per uh, unit mass okay so these are the numbers so these three equations are something like you know conservation of mass conservation of momentum conservation of energy say so you will get these three equations from the uh, shock mechanics and these three conditions are known as Huygenite conditions they relate basically suppose if the shock wave is propagating in a medium so how uh, you know at this junction say how do we calculate the uh, transition or you know like if the shock wave velocity is a capital u say how much will be the particle velocity in this medium and given the density of the material say how much it will uh, you know, density poor different how these things uh, goes away so these are the three equations and then there is one more i think fourth equation basically okay equation of states state also that relates a pressure to the density and internal energy in each matter it may be something like your constitutive uh, relations you know stress versus strain kind of a thing so here uh, we don't talk in terms of stresses and strains we talk in terms of pressure density these are the words and internal energy itself okay so these are some more constitutive equation kind of thing. like in our continuum mechanics also you know angular momentum linear momentum you know, energy uh, we use right and the constitutive equation so here also we have all these set of equations so this we call them as so these three uh, we call them as Huygenite condition this is anyway our constitutive relation i think using this one say so there is one more important thing is particle velocity and the shock wave velocity say shock wave velocity is uh, you know if it is denoted by capital u say and then uh, c is a bulk sound speed and up is a particle velocity so in this material shock is propagating okay so when shock is propagating at 10 km per second or 15 km per second how much the particles inside the medium say what will be their velocity so that to calculate there is some linear relationship you know people have found out and I think, uh, you know, so these are the three frames, basically, the contact, you know, so once this is a meteorite, you know, so once impact has started, say, so these are the pressure contours, uh, you know, and then uh, capital T, say, is the time uh, you know, taken kind of a thing, this one. So what they say is a time taken, say, so once it impacts, what happens, the shock waves, they propagate in the crust also, they also propagate in the meteorite also, okay, so they have to go back because of the impact. So the shock waves say so once this material has impacted the time how much they take from this uh, the impact thing to the uh, end of your uh, material so that they call this as a t and they denote everything with respect to that one okay so at 0.33 times a t say shock wave has come only up to this portion only okay so it has not end come up to the material uh, you know the end itself so these are the pressure uh, contours actually and 0.33 times and 0.99 say so the shock waves have also passed through the material itself almost you know it has come to the end itself and you can see these are the pressures so 33 gigapascals you know huge uh, numbers are there and uh, three seconds is, uh, that means you know the material everything has gone so the how these uh, pressure contours are uh, going here basically okay so these are three phases a b c or a b you can say that contact and the compression type of phrase uh, itself and these are the particle velocity so this equation i showed you that u is equal to c plus s s into up so people have fitted this basically like if it is aluminium say density is a 2750 c is 5.3 s is 1.37 okay so you can substitute if the shock wave velocity u so this you know you can find out up from this uh, expression and if it is a basalt say so these are the uh, numbers if it is a water you know so these are the numbers actually. So using that, you can easily find out, you know, the particle velocities also given the shock wave velocity itself. Okay. And then the, uh, you can even solve also like based on the densities and other things. Yeah, some more expressions that people have derived uh, without knowing the, this, this equation is the relation between 
shock wave to the uh, up okay without going to the shock wave so you can also calculate from this uh, expressions okay so these are uh, you know some quadratic equation comes there is a lot of uh, you know uh, you have to do some substitutions in algebra itself knowing the density and other uh, things said you can calculate the uh, particle velocity okay or you can directly calculate from the shock wave also or you can also calculate like you see from the particle velocity projectile is vi say like you know and the ut is uh, by velocity matching we can calculate this uh, numbers itself okay so anyway so now this is how the contact and compression so contact and compression means the projectile has a heated uh, that uh, you know that uh, the crust itself and then you know the shock waves are the pre huge pressures and temperature has started basically and the projectile anyway it vaporizes because of high temperature itself once that is done said the next thing is excavation stage actually okay like this one so a and b are basically you know the contact and compression kind of a thing then the excavation starts okay these shock waves propagate into the medium and then you know you will see these type of transient that crater you know the formation that's what we call as excavation basically so the excavation stage so the shock wave you know the created due to contact and compression it expands you know and finally it expands 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 because the energy will be dissipated into heat and other things and finally the shock wave weakens into an elastic wave and then it uh, dies down actually okay and the crater itself is opened by slower excavation flow itself so the duration of this stage is roughly given by the period of gravity wave and the crater is the d by g square root of you know the d by g this is a simple uh, expression the kind of diameter you know the time uh, how much you know the time takes to open up the crater itself so if you see on uh, arizona crater say okay the diameter if you try to find out so uh, you know arizona crater say gravity also you can uh, substitute here in 10 seconds that crater was uh, formed basically now if you see the imbrium basin say that marium imbrium i showed you right so it is a thousand kilometer diameter basin so to open up the entire basin say the transient crater it took 13 minutes basically you know because the gravity is a very low itself you know so like that you can also calculate how much time it takes for the train transient crater to form and the pressure piece and the shock wave of course it uh, dies down with the distance itself like this pressure contours you know so these are contours of the pressure say so initially it is very high you know like near the this place 100 170 as it goes down so 33 it decreases with the increase in distance itself so there are some equations are there p naught into a by r uh, where a is the radius of projectile pressure established during contact say and of course people say you know, n is equal to 3 or r cube basically r to the power of minus 3 so you know as distance increases the pressure you know it is proportional to 1 by r cube uh, kind of thing also okay and there are some uh, and numbers also like two to four uh, this also may be you know depending on the type of a material so people have tried to estimate okay and then the so now once this happens is a shock wave in the excavation stage the shock wave starts propagating so once the shock waves goes into the rock set then this metamorphism happens okay so like previously also i told that shatter cones gets formed that coside you know if it's a graphene set diamonds or whatever is it they start uh, coming into picture okay they form the rock itself converts into these type of uh, other uh, you know mineralogical changes will uh, happen itself so this already i showed you previously also okay petrographic shock indicators so pressure is a two to six gigapascals so shatter cones will be formed then if it's a quartz material say so site i showed you those uh, uh, rocks also it's just a white linear elements they form at this uh, pressures okay suppose if it is a graphite say so the pressures are 13 gigapascal is there say you will have a cubic diamond basically and you can have a hexagonal diamond this is the pressures are slightly higher itself so olivin means you know this also we know that the shock metamorphism also happens so this also i showed you you know the shatter cones uh, previously also i showed you these type of things gets automatically formed in this uh, rocks also so that is what we call as excavation period then we have a spallation basically once the excavation starts so the expanding shock waves say it encounters us now in the near the free surface because the surface is free uh, stresses will be zero or the pressure will be zero basically okay but uh, you see here what happens is you know this pressure say the pressure waves which are going here uh, you can see if you take at this place actually okay because it's a free surface pressure stresses are zero pressure anyway is zero but here below the rocks you will see huge pressures a compressive kind of a thing 540 gigapascals or whatever say so this what happens is the material which is lying on the top say so this starts uh, you know uh, ejecting into the atmosphere or whatever okay so this we call as palation thing itself 
a thin layer of surface rock so they're being thrown upwards you know at a very high velocity itself okay the theoretical maximum velocity approaches the impact speed itself so on the surface rocks so they get thrown upwards if the impact velocity is 17 km per second so, so these rocks also will get thrown up at a velocity of you know 17 uh, km uh, per second itself so what happens you know on earth what do you know right the escape velocity what is the escape velocity on earth so now when there is a impact say impact velocities are hypersonic 18 km per second so 18 km per second means what happens is the rocks which are on the surface okay so they starts to because the pressures are so high say they get ejected into the atmosphere okay so they will be their velocity also will be as good as uh, you know the impactor thing itself you followed so what happens say? So the surface rocks, what happens? They are also getting ejected at the same uh, velocity itself. Uh, now you tell me what, what will happen. See, you are throwing a rock basically into the upward in the sky and its velocity is 18 kilometer per second. So what happens to this rock? Hmm. So it will go outside the planet. It will also go outside the planet also. You followed it. Of course, uh, Earth thing also it goes, away. but on Moon, what happens? What is the Moon's gravity? Escape velocity on Moon is very small. You followed. So, a lot of uh, things also I showed you, right? Last time also, you know, on Mars also, gravity is very small. So, in Antarctica, you know, they have found out meteorites uh, which comes from Mars. You followed. So, from the Mars, the when there is impact on Mars, is the material which got ejected from the Mars. That also, you know, they have been discovered on Moon as well as, uh, you know, in Antarctica, I showed you the previous, uh, you know, the class. For previous classes itself so this also happens so this stage we call this as palation stage actually so whenever there is an impact say some surface rocks they may throw upward and they may be thrown out of our planet and they may land up at some other uh, places also okay so this is what we call as palation stage then the last one is seismic shaking actually okay so once the shock waves have been gone and they have been converted into elastic uh, waves itself once the velocity comes uh, last time itself, I told you, what do you mean by shock wave velocity? Suppose if you take any material, say, you know, it's a shear modulus, you know, it's a density, say, square root of mu by rho will give the shear wave velocity of the material. Suppose if it's Young's modulus is E, say, E by rho, square root of E by rho will give you the uh, velocity of the material. Now, when the energy is propagating at a higher speed than the particle's velocity, we call it as a shock wave. Now, when the shock wave reduces, say, from, uh, you know, uh, it is something like 18 kilometer per second, Finally, it becomes less than the shear wave velocity of the material. So it becomes like an elastic wave itself. Okay. So once these elastic waves, what happens is you will see this type of seismic wave, some type of a ground vibrations and others, uh, you, know, you will see the oscillations and other like a similar to an earthquake itself. So people have been, uh, you know, like because earthquakes also will shake the ground, impacts also will shake the ground at far, at, uh, far places, not in the near. You will see shock once the shock has gone. So they have some type of an equation also, like you know, magnitude also, you know, people have estimated, like you say, E is energy released by an impact that you can calculate easy by half m into V square, the kinetic energy. If you know the projectile diameter, say, and its velocity, so you can calculate energy. And if you substitute in this equation, so you will get the magnitude of that uh, impact also. And the same, then you can compare this with earthquake also, like how much magnitude earthquake will cause the ground vibration, you know, similar to an impact. So we follow. So this is the next step. Okay, then excavation mechanics basically. Okay, so this happened the target material set, the, which is shock wave is released a short time later. The material has a velocity that is only about one fifth of the particle velocity in the shock wave. So this residual velocity set, uh, this comes due to thermodynamic irreversibility in the shock compression. I told you right. So what happens is uh, in a shock wave is a compression kind of a thing. So compression goes. And then it comes back, reflection, rare fraction, it happens and tension happens, you know. So this is what they call as residual velocity. And uh, this velocity field set uh, excavates the crater and uh, downward, outward, then upward pattern. So the target material out of the crater, ejecting it at angles close to 45 degrees. So the streamlines, you know, all those things, you know, it happens after the excavation uh, mechanics itself, okay. So this is what the seismic shaking already I showed you. So this is what the excavation mechanics, okay. So this is what this whole crater is getting excavated basically. And then the eject is because uh, the pressure is zero. So you can see these are the streamlines. So there are some formulas are there like in the Maxwell's model, some simple uh, formulas people have derived. 
to find out you know the ejectors how much distance they go in what direction they go so these are all uh, things are there and you can see if a to a dash is if you take a cross section uh, this is how the pressure wave looks like actually okay so this is a two different times you have shown and the pressure wave say one by r square you know the particle velocity is one by r square it decays you know as the things uh, goes into this one okay so inside the growing crater cell now uh, you will have a vapor plume also will happen because things will melt also and as already i told you the vapor plume materials uh, may even reach the escape velocity and leave the uh, planet itself some of the planets atmosphere also it can uh, go away previously i showed you that image also that vapor plumes will be also will be formed because of high temperature and others so sometimes impacts uh, you know giant impacts is in our earth atmosphere also you know it can uh, go away from our planet earth so you follow so this is also very important thing so such impact erosion say may have played a uh, role in history martian atmosphere so like in mars now you see there is no oxygen or atmosphere a little is there but uh, some of the things have escaped or water has escaped itself we don't know it may be due to an impact basically okay so that also could be one of the uh, reason itself okay and now the and then the crater growth rate actually so initially as already told the crater will be hemispherical the transient crater then slowly you know because of gravity i showed you right the material comes down and you know adjustments will happen so they have some empirical relations are there like hemispherical growth ceases you know 2 ht by g so they have been estimated from uh, numerical experiments and experiments and numerical simulations also so these numbers are also there basically okay so ht dt say so these are some uh, you know empirical equations 2 ht times g Uh, you know, from the hemispherical growth cell when it ceases and then when it collapses and other things also. Okay, so this is what they say. So the impact site melt. So this is the transient crater is like this, you know. So once the transient crater, you know, so once this transient crater is formed, then the modification happens. Slowly, the ejected material may come up, and then you know, from here also, breccia or whatever you see, all those things comes up, and then you will see a final, uh, you know, the crater site. Okay. And then the maximum depth of excavation, say how much will be the depth or whatever. So you know, a material lying above one third of the transient crater depth, okay, so is thrown out of the crater. They say so, like how much material is thrown out of the crater? Say one third of the transient crater depth. So the transient crater depth is H A T say. So one third of it, you know, the material gets uh, thrown out. Of. That much gets excavated out of the crater itself. So material deeper than this is simply pushed downwards into the target. So when impact happens, say one third of this portion, it just goes outside as an ejector, spallation, or whatever here, and the remaining materials it just pushed inside the, you know, the this one, and the shock metamorphism happens, and then you will see different type of uh, rocks itself. So these are the very various stages, you know, of the crater uh, things itself. Okay, so the impact angle, and then you know the form of transient crater itself. Of course, the impact angle, 90 degrees or 60 degrees or 50 degrees, 45 degrees. Of course, that also matters a lot itself. Okay. Yeah. So the maximum depth of the excavation. So all these things is you can easily, you know, one has been estimated like one third, and these numbers are also available itself. Okay. So now after the excavation set, now modification happens. Okay, excavation flow flow has opened the transient crater. Ejecta has been launched onto ballastic trajectories. Major change takes place in the motion of debris within and beneath the crater. Okay, so instead of flowing upwards and away from the crater center, the debris comes to a momentary halt and then begins to move downwards. That's what we are calling as breccia lens and back towards the center where it has uh, come itself. I showed you like yesterday that videos also like you know once everything goes away and then things comes back to the center itself. So this collapse is this is basically due to gravity, you know, and then elastic rebound of underlying compressed rock layers may also play a role. So the may, uh, the center also it gets uplifted actually, it goes in the other direction, you know, and then you will see a center peak and other things also. Okay, so the de debris sliding drain back in small craters to wholesale alteration of the formation, larger craters, floors rise, central peaks appears. And the rims basically sink down into wide zones of stepper terraces. I already showed you that uh, figure itself. Mountain ranges, wide central pits may appear in still large uh, craters itself. And there are some numbers are the time scale of collapse is uh, is uh, same as excavation interval of a few times d by g square root of this itself. Okay, so they do very and of course these things happens very fast. The modification, excavation, contact, and compression also. Okay. 
so this is what they say uh, you know modification uh, you know how it you know, like 15 kilometer diameter even like i told you it's simple transient crater smaller than say the modification entails only a simple crater only is getting formed basically okay but if it is a more than that one then you have to see that in the crater walls and other things also comes into picture and then there are some numbers are there like you say thickness of this brescia lens is typically half the depth of the crater volume with this collapse increases the original diameter by 15 percent so these some numbers have been estimated from the, uh, the observations and from the calculations itself okay now the modification set so this is what a simple crater you know uh, it automatically the things gets uh, fallen this is what we are calling as a brescia melt and here you will see different type of rocks like shatter cones other things also comes into picture and then finally it's a so white i showed you right all those things will happen this whole thing is under shock that planar deformation features everything you can see in this uh, region itself and the complex craters as already i showed you they are entirely different you know the walls slums floor is uplifted central peaks you will see multiple rings also you will see and the floor is overlined by thick layer of highly shocked impact melt all these things you can see here itself so there has been some uh, you know explanations to say how these like people have done like you know bingham fluid they say like you know a material that responds elastically up to different up to, up to three megapascals you know so they say like you know one gigapascal second stress and large collapsing craters so walls slums along discrete faults forming terraces whose widths are controlled by bingham strength floor rises controlled by viscosity until the differential stresses fall below the three megapascals okay once this falls below then everything becomes elastic itself so central peak may rise and then collapse again in large craters forming the observed internal uh, ring itself so the multiple rings is uh, it is very difficult you know to simulate on uh, numerically as well as to do the experiments so some analogies you know people have estimated also this is what we said okay last time also complex craters so center gets uplifted and then finally say the excavation happens and the center upliftment happens then the modification of the crater you can see the crater wall set it just gets broken into you know piece piece the new faults is they get uh, you can see these type of faults in the near on the walls of the crater itself so now multi-ring basins and others you know is not uh, but the complex crater itself is very difficult you know the multi-ring basins is not well understood now people are trying some uh, they have only discovered at some places some simulations are being uh, carried out and they are trying to understand actually okay this multi-ring and then you will see a lot of normal faults uh, you know in the multi-ring basins also so these are very special uh, kind of features you will see in this multi-ring and then in the multi-ring basins the main headache is you know the mantle also comes up and the entire stratigraphy you know changes also in this uh, multi-ring basin itself okay so this is that uh, i showed you right that oriental basin that's a multi-ring basin you can see the mantle say it has been uplifted actually at the center of the basin you will see these type of new faults and the faults depth also you can see uh, the depth is can you read here how much is the depth of the faults they have gone up to how many kilometers say? Uh, see the oriental basin said you can see these dotted lines are all the faults which have been created uh, almost 20 kilometers so just imagine you know these are faults are okay so and these faults can even produce earthquakes also you follow so these all these things happens in multi-ring basins so uh, modeling is very you know complicated okay in these multi-ring basins and not we don't know very well but now people because of large amounts of data so from lunar and other expeditions so now I think, you know, maybe the numerical simulations, you know, give some kind of answers. Uh, this is that same oriental basin only, okay, like uh, multi-ring, you know. So this is a topography data. Uh, you have all of you are having in QGS. This is, I think, the gravity data and this is a Boger gravity anomalies, okay. The gravity also changes because mantle compositions are different, no. That moon's gravity set is not constant. It changes near these type of multi-ring basins because, you know, the mantle uplift density you can see thrust density 2900 mantle density 3400 because there is a huge uplift say the acceleration due to gravity also changes so if you see bogar gravity anomaly uh, you can see here it will be very high uh, because of the more dense material is there and then you know it goes away so these rings you can identify from these images also like gradient of a gravity i think you can see nicely and i think this is maybe you know thickness crustal thicknesses and others also so here you can see what's the crustal thickness at the center so this graph if you see here d the crustal thickness at the center of the oriental basin says how much 
approximately around 10 around 10 but as you go far away say the crustal thicknesses goes up to 60 km the reason is so at the center of the crust say, you are having a mantle actually okay because of this crust thickness has to decrease you follow it so these things you will see in multi ring basins so if you want to model a multi ring basin so all these features have to be captured you know, and developing a model uh, you know is very complex experiment uh, yeah, of course experiments you can't do but uh, computer simulations also you know are very difficult actually okay so these were the same uh, you know the oriental basin they have done recently you know this paper got published i think 5 years back in science journal or whatever so you can see this is a crust the uh, this is a crust and this is a mantle here so at the center of the oriental basin so you will see this huge mantle upliftment has uh, happened here so the crustal thickness is very very small and all these rings is a cr outer ring inner ring and all these places you will see nicely these type of faults itself these red lines you are seeing so they are all the faults they go up to i think uh, up to the mantle some 15 20 kilometers or 50 km this is a recent paper that was the old paper which i showed you so you know the 50 degree dip angle everything has been estimated in the uh, oriental basin so the oriental basin is like you know uh, geologically uh, if you are interested uh, mantle uh, things you can find out faults are there you know so many interesting features are there in this uh, oriental basin okay and now the ejecta deposits is how much distance ejecta deposits now right now we are seeing only the uh, crater only but the ejecta so that is the material which is going flying out of the place how much distance you will see this one so a deposit of debris is uh, ejected from the crater interior it surrounds essentially all the impact craters itself so the ejecta deposits the thickest at the crater ring so this is a typical crater i think uh, timochar is uh, crater of okay so here you will see this is the rim of the crater basically lot of debris will get deposited at the rim itself and apart from that so you will see these type of rays actually so in all these directions so the ejecta has got deposited and sometimes this ejecta flies up and then it may create these type of secondary craters actually okay so small small craters also will get formed uh, you know around our site itself i think this is the apollo 15 uh, you know the landing site okay so there i think uh, they have got this uh, information also so this ejecta deposits the thickest at the crater rim and thins with increasing distance so where this deposit is recognizably continuous near the crater it is called as an ejecta blanket actually okay so it is like this entire portion so it is all continuous okay so this portion is known as ejecta blanket this also is a very important uh, you know how much uh, distance this crater will have an effect itself so thickness also people have tried to establish like how much distance the thickness or a function radius away what will be the thickness of the ejecta blanket as you go distance away so some type of uh, you know numerical expressions are there like uh, maybe empirical uh, people have estimated also and then this uh, volume of the ejecta say okay so volume of the crater bowl so how much the crater bowl is there say so that much volume that material has been uh, you know, that is the same as the volume of the ejecta you know that is how they use this uh, Schroeter's rule also and there are some uh, expressions also is there like capital M is the total mass ejected from the crater say that you can easily find out from the hemisphere volume itself okay and mf the mass of the largest ejected fragment how much is the maximum fragment which has been ejected say so the empirical relations are there okay mf is 0.8 times me into 0.e e. me you can easily find out hemisphere you know the bowl or something like that so you can easily find out the largest fragment also okay so this also can be done and then ballastic sedimentation also so as already i told you so once uh, during impact happens uh, this is what we call as ejecta curtains actually okay t 1.5 times t 2 times t t is the time i told you right how much time the you know that uh, taken you know, the, when the impact happens the shock wave to propagate in the asteroid itself is a capital t say so 2.5 times so you can see these type of ejectors also and as already i told you, some of the ejectors you know uh, they may even escape the the atmosphere or the planet itself and sometimes you know it may finally they land up actually at the nearby you know the far away places itself so this is what they call as ballastic sedimentation basically okay that means ejecta from this impact they are getting sedimented at some other uh, place itself okay and they follow a project a parabolic trajectory and then fall back to the surface striking with the same velocity as the other ejection itself and the debris ejected from an impact crater travels together in the form of an ejecta curtain okay so this is what we told you a long time itself. like yesterday in the video also you will see that the ejecta curtain okay 
the same graphon which we are showing here. So the material flies off, okay, and then it falls back onto the planet. So you can see this type of things they get uh, deposited here. And the huge uh, rocks, is said, the size, huge fragment things you will find nearby as you go far away. So small, small pieces will be there at a uh, far away uh, distance itself. Uh, you can see this is a, I think this is a, you know, a crater, I think, Lichinberg crater, okay, which is a relatively young crater on moon, you know. So you can see, uh, you can see it is a, what type of crater it is. Now, by observation, can you tell what type of crater it is? Now we have seen right several classifications. What type of crater it is? Now, why? So because it's perfectly circular. No, perfectly straight. Now, apart from that, what is the diameter? You can read here. If there's less than 20 kilometers. No, so for moon, we have, suppose if the same crater was on Earth, say what will be? What it will be? See, so Earth, what is the transition I showed you, right? That graph. No. Three, you remember, right? Three kilometers the transition. So if the same thing happens on Earth, it will be complex only. And now you can see here. Now what is happening here nearby the rim, say? You can see all the ejecta sphere itself. And you can see the small, small uh, craters which are you are all seeing here, say. So these are all that the ballastic sedimentation, actually, okay? So all these things, you know, they form, the fly off, and then they will create these type of secondary craters itself. So this crater, if you see in, uh, you, you can easily see it in QGIS, you know, that software. So you can see this, you know, Hamaki, this type of concentric zones, you know, nice uh, structures, you know, the radial like rays or something like that also, you can see in these uh, images itself, okay? And now this is the same thing only, that same uh, crater only. You can see like, you know, the crater is here, smooth, hummocky deposits are there, dune structures, secondary crater chains are there, then uh, subradial aligned secondary crater chains plus isolated secondary crater clusters. So you can find out all these uh, number salts. And the angle is 45 degrees. So this is what they call as ballastic sedimentation. So you can see the secondary craters, you know, these, all these things comes under ballastic sedimentation. They have been formed due to the main uh, crater itself, okay? And there are some, uh, you know, the law, ejected mass is said, and this this same expression only, which I showed you here, right? If I know the volume of the, uh, you know, the mass of the crater, say, mass ejected from the crater, the mass of the largest ejected fragment, say. So this relation, you know, people have estimated. You know, so this is what they say. The uh, log log graph, total ejected mass. Say. So this you can find out from the hemisphere, okay? That volume of that one. Then this is a mass of the largest fragment actually because it's very important because the largest fragment will keep on will give another crater itself. Okay. So these things so if you see here, they have plotted the graph like this. Okay. So you can see 14, 18, you know, like if you see material crater, Arizona crater says so here, uh, you know, one point. So it'll be 14 uh, this uh, grams is said. So how much will be corresponding? You can easily calculate from this figure or maybe from that uh, equations also. Okay. So this is Arizona crater, okay, which uh, all of you have uh, you know, uh, previous logs I've shown you here. So people have tried to uh, done this ballastic sedimentation. See some students, you know, geological students you say, they have gone here and then they have calculated where the largest boulders are there. So here they observed a the largest boulder and they have done the trajectory estimations also. Like you see this boulder, how much it has hit, you know, at what time say, like for example, the crater has formed say, Say at 2.5 seconds, you know, 54 kilometer per hour, this boulder hit it, then 152 kilometer per hour. So they have calculated all those the largest fragments, you know, the velocities, and they have constructed back the geological history of this uh, crater itself. See, the after two seconds, you know, 2.5 seconds, 50 kilometer per hour, uh, this has been formed. They have done all this calculation, like the largest impact segment and other salts. Okay. Now, in the sometimes a fluidization, like if you see on Mars, is said, uh, you know, what happens in Mars, we have layers, uh, this water is there. So when water is there, you know, there's a porous kind of material happens. So you will see the fluid is basically, you can see these type of variety, variety of features, which says that, you know, water is there on that uh, planet also, you follow. So this is also very, the moon, you will not see these type of features, but Mars, moon, Mercury, they are entirely different. If there is a water cell, then uh, it will be slightly be a different itself. So these, I think, on Mars, you know, they, then, you know, this give a clue that, you know, there may be a clue there, may be there, you know, to, to, for this, this crater itself. 
and secondary creators also i showed you the largest things they go away and then create this uh, secondary creators also okay so anyway there are secondary the ages of course uh, primary or primary will be too great and then uh, uh, many experienced creator uh, these things they do okay secondary creators also clustered so we take these is very important information okay whether it's a secondary creator or it's a primary creator because you know whether by way counting the things you know then uh, to, to find out the geological ages also this becomes a very important itself okay then impact that angle of impact basically if it is a 45 degrees if it is a 90 degrees impact if it is 30 degrees impact you know so you will see elliptical type of craters also okay so if the 10 degree ellipse when the, you will not see a perfect circular so when it is angle you know 10 degrees so what happened butterfly wing patterns you know variety variety of things also happens when the angle of this is uh, you know very small so of course the crater dimensions we can easily find out the scaling and other things also like how big was the material that made the crater these essential the inverse problem like we know the crater we know the diameter of the crater we know the you know, the depth of the crater and people have tried to find out the inverse problem like you know what was the impact size and what was impactors velocity and what was impactors angle you know how much uh, was the uh, things which produced that type of a uh, crater it's it is an inverse problem you know like you know the the deformations everything you go back and ask the uh, what was the inputs basically so this also people tried but generally forward problems are very simple okay so given the load you can find out the displacements but if i give displacement and ask you to find out load it will be very difficult you know because inverse problems multiple solutions are uh, possible and here the diameter of the impactor say then the velocity of the impactor the angle of the impactor and then sometimes these impactors may not be circular kind of thing the impactor may be you know a complicated shape it may be elliptical shape or it may be we don't know you follow so all these things have to be estimated basically okay so some uh, you know like some uh, thumb rules are like self similarity scalings you know people use uh, like if i know for a particular crater so you can find out for other crater by using self similarity self similar scaling this one by three and others comes into picture like for example if i know d naught w naught so like i do experiment in the lab I do D naught, W naught, I know whatever impact are there. Now, if I want to translate it to lunar crater or some other crater, so use this uh, self scheme, similar uh, scaling things also, like D by D naught, W, but you do experiment in the lab. So, in the lab, when you do experiment, you know W naught, you also know D naught actually. So, using that information, you do for uh, moon or other things also. So, these things also people have tried and some simple uh, things are there also. So, crater diameter scaling also is there then uh, you know complex this, this also is there coupling parameter transient crater given the length velocity gravity or angle you know you can easily find out also so so many things have been uh, done itself okay this is fine. Oh, fine so i will uh, stop here i will uh, share this one so i will just wanted to show you one interesting uh, thing okay before uh, you are able to see the screen Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, so sir. all of you, you can go to this website. I will share you in WhatsApp also. Impact Earth Impact FX program, you know, which is created by this Gareth Collins and Jay Melosh. Jay Melosh is a reputed planetary geologist. He's no more, you know, he passed away last year. So you can see, uh, you this, this they have done developed for Earth actually. Okay, so like for example, say, uh, let us say I will fill up the, ten kilometer. My house is nearby. So projectile diameter. Say let us say it is hundred diameter. 100 meters is the diameter okay then projectile density uh, suppose if i take a dense rock or iron type of a material actually okay it is hitting my place and impact velocity so let us say it is uh, 17 kilometer per second for uh, asteroids comets you can easily put up impact angle say let us say i put 90 degrees okay okay and then if it is done the impact happens on water or sediments or crystalline rock this also if i click say and calculate the effects so they have done a new nice uh, this one see these are the inputs so distance from the impact projectile diameter density impact velocity angle everything is there so they can see energy say uh, how much is 6.05 into 10 to the power of 17 joules and then you know major global changes so when this impact happens the impact does not make a noticeable change in tilt of earth axis this one then atmosphere entry they give all these dimensions and finally the crater diameter so now can you read here transient crater hmm. what is the diameter 100 meter is the uh, impact of size and velocity is 17 kilometer per second. So the transient crater diameter will be how much? 
Yeah. Can you read here? What is the correct transient crater diameter? 2.62. And what will be the depth? 926. 920. And the final crater set. That means after modification and all those things basically. The final crater diameter will be 2.98 and depth will be 411 meters. Side. So the crater formed is what type of crater is this one? Hmm. Simple crater. Simple crater. Right? This is a very simple program based on the equations diagram. So like for example, if I take uh, you know uh, 2000 say, let us say 2 kilometers. Okay, 2 kilometer is the size of the projectile. Okay, and once again I calculate say. Hmm. Now what type of crater it is? Now, can you read here? So complex crater. Complex crater. You followed. So this is a very simple program. Uh, the equations, you know, nicely they have made it into I think internet kind of a platform. If you uh, substitute, say, of course they have given the article that basic equations you can see here. Very simple, uh, you know, web-based computer program. And this works only for Earth. It doesn't work for Moon and others. Okay, because they have considered the atmosphere and all those into considerations. So this is a very interesting uh, website. I want all of you to just to seek to just have a feeling you know and you, they will also tell you uh, like uh, eject also they will give you and your position was inside the transient crater and ejected so if you are near at 100 meters so you also will be thrown out in the air itself okay and they will give intensity also so, yeah. so like for example now i have taken 2000 uh, let me say i will 100 meters on okay so, So you can see right this one yes yeah. so 100 meters say so if you see calculate the effects you know you can easily find out see uh, thermal radiation also will be there's a seismic effects say. now you are you are standing at 10 kilometers say. so what's the magnitude of this one hmm. six six magnitude and what will happen at your place damage negligible in buildings of good design and construction so they will tell you all the information also and ejecta say that will arrive 45.2 seconds after the impact. At your site, you can see average ejecta thickness is 41.9 centimeter, and this is a diameter. Air blast also will be there. Everything will be given by this uh, program actually. Okay, so I would suggest all of you, uh, you please go to that uh, website to just have a feeling of the impacts. You know, of course, that is written for Earth, but you can uh, just find. Okay.